which day there are more than 35,000 people locked up in Canadian prisons. More than enough criminals to populate a small city. Some will spend their entire life behind bars. Others will return to society to lead peaceful, productive lives. But one group of inmates worries prison authorities above all. Those who will one day be released, despite strong signs, they will go on to commit even graver crimes. In the 1980s, one of those dangerous inmates was a man named Douglas Worth. Doug Worth, at that point in his life, was a career criminal. He had uh, trouble for the, the typical young person sort of issue of heart that spread to increase the embarrassment of traveling from country to country and to Ontario. And it was a, a, a serious sexual assault or rape in to have uh, basically grabbed a young woman and then dragged her into the back of a, of a, of a truck and, and strangled her with a, with a belt. of an early parole, but with a limited sentence, authorities will be unable to keep him behind bars forever. Once his sentence had been served, he would have to be released into the community. There could no longer be any controls, there'd be no parole, there'd be no supervision, there'd be no control. Spring of 1987, with only a few months left after his sentence, a case would Douglas Worth reconnects with a woman named Mary Kelly and her young son, Sean. He 
Mary Kelly first met Douglasworth when she went to visit a friend or someone that she knew at the prison where Douglasworth was incarcerated. She came to know him, and as a result of that, um, after he was released, they continued a relationship. Sean Kelly was the first son of another relationship. He was uh, an abusive. for lengths of time uh, because of the, uh, the very obvious injuries that she, that she suffered. For a period of time, the uh, OPP as well as the Edmonton uh, police uh, uh, noted his uh, movements, but gradually he drifted away and as I understand it, he ended up drifting back into Ontario. Words whereabouts are unknown. A dangerous ex convict is no longer under supervision. November 1987, Brampton, Ontario, just west of Toronto. A broken sinner safe community, it faces its own unique challenges when it comes to enforcing the law. December 1987. Originally from Saskatchewan, a young Métis girl named Trina Campbell is new to the city's downtown core. Trina Campbell was a hunter girl, 12 years old. She December 11th, Trina heads to school in the nearby community of Streetsville. She was delivered to school by school bus, and uh, after school she was picked up and, and uh, dropped off at the location where she normally would be dropped off to, to go back to the group home. She was seen getting off the bus by the bus driver when she was in school. In light of Trina's past, workers at the group
February 1988, in Brampton, Ontario. It has been two months since 12-year-old Trina Campbell Bench. Despite fears that she may be the victim of foul play, police have no concrete leads. She is still classified as a missing person. At the same time, ex-convict Douglas Worth remains in the region, living once again with his common-law girlfriend Mary Kelly and her son Sean. Despite Worth's violent tendencies, Mary has followed him east from Edmonton. March 1988. Along with the ever-present violence, Douglas Worth is growing paranoid, fearful that police will find some reason to put him back behind bars. In a confession of moment, he reveals to Mary his involvement in some kind of illegal activity. While leaving details of the crime vague, he asks her to help him rehide some incriminating evidence that he stashed away a few months earlier. We had told Mary that he had some guns stored in a room area, that if he were caught with these guns, that they would cause him, of course, a great deal of uh, problem. After renting a car for the task, Mary Kelly drives Worth to a location near downtown Brampton. She was, she was somewhat reticent to ask too many questions. Leaving Brampton, the couple searches for a secluded area where Worth can rehide the bag. More than an hour north of the city, they stop next to some woods. Worth disappears with his cargo while Mary waits on the car. Several minutes later, he returns empty handed.
Hughes' aid worker and local police officer Hugh Muir. Behind closed doors, he believes his fear of Douglasworth and his need to escape the violent household. He was quite, quite upset and sobbing.
scarecrowing hunch that Douglas Wirth is behind the disappearance of Trina Campbell. Police still have little evidence to act on. And it's at this point, we, we're in a quandary as an investigator. We know that we we really truly do need a body. I mean, if, if this is true, if this is what's happened, we know we need to be able to find that body. we kind of went out on a limb a little bit at that point in sharing our belief that in fact Doug Worth had not killed a man and had, but had killed Trina Campbell. We were very strongly convinced that it was Trina Campbell that had been killed. And what turned the hero head was the fact that she had already had Doug babysit her daughters. Doug was 12. So very much like Trina Campbell, very uh, and then she realized she, she just
keep visual surveillance on this individual. Although police feel the couple may be stopping for the night, they are soon proven wrong. Having a quick drink by himself in a bar, Douglas Wick returns to the car and drives northward out of the city. Along the same road, he once took a bag that he claimed was filled with guns. My God, they're going to break to the uh, they're going to do this now. All of them up in the, the north and into a very, very rural area where there are no other cars. The fact that our surveillance was able to do that without being spotted was incredible. A few hours later, Doug Wright begins making detours around the small town of Terra Nova. It's the middle of the night. side road east and one side road west that we would see his headlights come on that would give us a chance to get away from where he's coming and let everybody else know that he's now moving again 5 a.m police continue to wait for movement from the rented car the long hours are taking their toll so i've been awake almost 48 hours and i've just fallen asleep as it turns out about Quarter to six, one of the officers is yelling for me. He startles me. I wake up. The officer's telling me that the car is gone.
Master until forensic expert Stephen Brock shows up on the scene. They asked if I would uh, photograph the scene as is per normal procedure. We do 360 degrees of panoramic photography as well as uh, major crime scenes. That was conducted. And then we did closer up shots on the vehicle. Basically, when I put my head in the car and, and we got that first odor, examination of the facial features, investigators on the scene realized their worst case scenario is a reality. The skull belongs to the same young girl who went missing on the streets of Brampton five months earlier. Looking at her picture and looking at the remains, there were some very specific dental abnormalities in the front teeth, and it was at that point that we realized that we recovered the skull. returned to the woods north they prepare for trial, police find an invaluable witness in Douglas Worth's girlfriend, Mary Kelly. Although originally charged with being an accessory after the fact, the charges are eventually dropped. There is little doubt that she was an unwilling participant in Douglas Worth's efforts to cover up his crime.
Awesome Trina Campbell went on to help influence changes in Canadian laws. The fact that Douglas Wirth was let out of prison just six months before he murdered her, despite his own claims that he would reoffend, fueled debate over better ways to deal with long-term violent criminals. the criminal code was amended, giving authorities much stronger tools to keep the most dangerous high-risk offenders behind bars for good. I think about, about this case, I, I see the, the picture of Tina Campbell, and that innocent, beautiful smile that put her in jail, how happy she seemed in the photograph, and how tragic it turned out to be. Sense of accomplishment to be able to be part of a team and get someone, especially the likes of 